Hi guys, welcome to my channel. In this video, I will be covering Python input and output. Along with this, I will explain eval function. After that, I will explain Python keywords and standard type built-in functions in Python and then unsupported types in Python. I will explain all these topics. Guys, I have uploaded complete Python programming subject tutorials. I will provide link in description. You can watch from there. If you are watching this video for the first time, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my channel. Let's get started. At first, I will explain input and output function. In Python for input, we use input function and for output, we use print function. In Python, if you want to give any input, then you need to use input function. And this print function is used to display output. At first, I will explain this print function with an example. This is example program. Here inside print function, I written text that is hello. As we know, we need to print string in double quotations. So I written hello in double quotations. Whenever you execute this program, then you will get output hello. This is simple program using print function. This is another program here. I written print 10. Whenever I execute this program, then I will get output 10. This 10 is integer value. So there is no need of giving double quotations. Only for string, you need to give double quotations. So here I will get output 10. This is another program. Here I written print 10.5. Now I will get output 10.5. This is another program. Here I written print hello comma 10 comma 10.5. And whenever you execute this program, then you will get output hello 10 and 10.5. This is my output. Here I want to print two words. That is btech and csc. So I need to write print in double quotations. Write btech double quotations close comma in double quotations write csc. Whenever you execute this program, then you will get output btech csc. I want to separate this btech and csc with dash symbol. So for that purpose, you need to write print btech comma csc comma scp is equal to where scp stands for separate. I want to separate these two words. So I written here scp is equal to Inside double quotations, I am writing dash. Here inside double quotations, I am taking symbol that is dash. Whenever you execute this program, then you will get output btech dash csc. This separate parameter is used to separate two words. Not only two words, if you want to separate multiple words, then just write here separate and how you want to separate, give that symbol here. Here I took three words, they are btech, csc and second year. I want to separate these three words with polish stop symbol. So take here separate parameter that is SCP is equal to where SCP stands for separate is equal to inside double quotations take polish stop. So whenever you execute this program, then you will get output B take polish stop CSC polish stop second year. For example, if you give here slash n where slash n stands for new line, new line. If you give here slash n, I will get output B tech where slash n stands for new line. So in next line, I will get CSC and in next line, I will get second year. This is my output. If you want to separate multiple words, then you need to use separate parameter that is SCP. And how you want to separate them? Like you want to separate them by giving pull stop or by giving comma or by giving dash symbol. Just give them in double quotations. This is another example. Here inside print, I return one sentence that is I am Nagendra Sai. This is my name and I return this in double quotations. After that, take comma and I return end equal to slash n slash n slash n. You need to give this slash and slash and slash and in double quotations. After that, I written another sentence that is print in double quotations. I written I am from Miryalagoda. Whenever you execute this program, then you will get output. I am Nagendra Sai. Base slash and stands for new line. Here I given slash and three times. So after three lines of gap, it will print another statement. So after three lines of gap, I will get I am from Miryalagoda. This is my output. I will get output I am Nagendra and after three lines of cap I will get I am from Miryalagoda. This is use of print function and separate and end parameters. Next I will explain what is use of this input function. By using input function you can give input. I will give an example so that you can clearly understand what is use of this input function. This is example here I written a equal to 10. I given variable name as a and I given value of a as 10. After that I written print a. Whenever you execute this program then whatever the value that is present Inside variable a will be generated as output. So I will get output 10 because value of a is 10. I will get output 10. But I don't want to give value like this. I want to give value after executing program. So for that purpose, we need to use input function. Same program I will explain by using input function. Here I written a equal to input of in double quotations write enter number. Double quotations close and after that write print a by using input function you can give input after executing program and i want to give integer value so here take type as int whenever you execute this program then you will get output enter number because i written here enter number so i'll get output enter 
number by using input function you can give input and i given here data type as int so you can give any integer value as input for example i am giving here 10 so here i will get output 10 this is another example here i am taking a equal to take input function double quotations i am taking enter text because i want to give string so i am taking here enter text close input function i want to enter text text is of string type so take here type as str that is string and after that write print double quotations your text is double quotations close comma a whenever you execute this program then i will get output enter text because here inside input function i written enter text so it will display here enter text now i can enter any text because i given here data type as string so you can enter any string for example i want to enter nagendra here i given text as nagendra so i will get output your text is Nagendra. This is my output. It is not mandatory to give text inside input function. You can also write like this a equal to float of input. It is not mandatory to give text inside this input. Just write like this float input and print a and I written print a whenever you execute this program then you can enter any value like here I given 10.5 so print function will print value which i given so i'll get output 10 point here if you want to give float value then you need to enter data type as float and if, if you want to give string value then enter data type as string and if you want to give integer value then enter data type as int but there is one function in python that function name is eval function by using this eval function there is no need of giving data type to input eval function can automatically understand what kind of data that we are giving for example same program here i am writing a equal to eval of input of enter number using this eval function you can give any data type value like you can give integer value or you can give string value or you can give float value so whatever the value that you give eval function can automatically understand data type of that value for example whenever you execute this program then you will get output enter number because i given here enter number so i'll get output enter number here i can give any number for example if i give here 10.5 then i will get output 10.5 same program in place of 10.5 if you give here value 10 even this program will be executed so you will get output 10 here you can also give string for example here if you enter any text that is btech then you will get output btech so eval function can automatically understand what kind of data that you given where eval stands for evaluate this is use of eval function next i will explain keywords in python keywords are reserved words whose meaning is already defined in python interpreter meaning of these keywords are already present in python interpreter total there are 33 keywords about by python in order to see those keywords just open python and you need to import keyword module how to import keyword module just go to python and type import keyword and after importing keyword module just type keyword dot kw list where kw list stands for keyword list whenever you execute this code then it will display list of all keywords supported by python these are 33 keywords they are false true and it also contains conditional statements they are if elif and else and contains loops like for loop and while loop for loop and while loop it contains boolean type like true false and control flow statements like break continue guys just remember all this whenever python keywords question comes in exam then you need to write all this in upcoming videos you will get to know what is use of this all keywords python keywords are case sensitive that means it will treat capital letters and small letters differently here for keyword true and false t and f are capital letters but here i given variable equal to t in small letter so it will display error for example for if statement you need to use small i but in place of small i if you use capital i then it will display error so keywords are case sensitive and we cannot use keywords as variable name or method name or any other identifier we cannot use keywords as identifiers for example here if i take variable name as if if equal to 10 this if is keyword so you cannot use keyword as variable name or method name or any other identifiers if you use this if keyword as variable name then it will display error next i will explain unsupported types in python there are some of the types that are not supported by python they are 
first one is character data type whereas in c language we use character data type but whereas python do not support this character data type instead of this character data type you need to use string data type that is str and next python do not support pointers by using pointers we can find address and for pointers we use asterisk symbol whereas python do not support pointers if you want to find address then just you need to use id function for example I written a equal to 10 and I am writing print id of a. By using this id function, you can find address. Here I will get address of a like 16231. This is address. So Python do not support pointer type. And next third one is Python do not support long int or short int. In C programming, for example, if you want to declare any long size integer values, then you need to use long int. And for short size, you need to use short int. But whereas Python do not support this long int or short int, just you need to use int either for long int or short int just you need to use integer type and python do not support double data type for example if you want to store long size float values then you need to use double data type but python do not support double data type if you want to store long size float values you can use float data type. these are four types that are not supported by python next i will explain standard type built-in functions in python there are four standard type built-in functions supported by python they are compare function that is cmp string function that is str representation function that is rapr and fourth one is type function at first i will explain what is this cmp function that is compare function compare function is used to compare two values this is example program here i given value of a as 10 and value of b as 20 after that i written print function and inside this print function i am comparing this value a and b just write compare in brackets write a comma b that means I am comparing two values a, b. Whenever you execute this program, then you will get output minus one because here value of a is 10 and value of b is 20. This 10 is less than 20. If first value is less than second value, then we will get negative value as output. I will give another program. Here I written value of a as 20 and value of b as 10. After that, I written a print. Inside this print function, I am comparing a, b. That is CMP of a comma b. Here value of a is 20 and value of b is 10. Here first value is greater than second value. So here I will get output as 1. If first value is less than second value, then we will get negative value as output. If first value is greater than second value, then we will get output as positive value. Next, I will explain string function. Here, I given value of a as btec, where btec is string. We need to represent string in double quotations. After that, I written print str of a. Whenever you execute this program, then you will get output btec. Without any double quotations, you will get output btec. This is use of string function. Next, I will explain what is use of repr function. That is representation function. Here, I written repr of a. Here, I written print repr of a. Whenever you execute entire program, then you will get output btec. And REPR mean it will represent BTEC in single quotations. It will represent string in single quotations. So I will get output BTEC in single quotations. This is use of str and repr function next i will explain what is use of type function type function is used to display data type of given value for example here i written a equal to 10 and i written print a and print type of a whenever you execute this program then it will print value of a that is 10 type function will print data type of given value i given value as 10 10 is integer type so i will get output class int this is my output these are four standard type built-in functions in python